what is it that Hamas wants to achieve? I mean, what is it? I mean, Trevor Phillips says that people voted for Hamas as opposed to Fatah, to the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank. They voted for Hamas knowing that they would be much more hard line. So what is it that they want? I hope what Trevor's not saying is that by voting for Hamas, those who voted were um, in some way uh, are now uh, deserve or you know the punishment collective punishment that is now being it's not espoused no, that's an no, let me finish thing to say. let me finish but the, but the, thing the, you know it's not, not what I'm it's, saying I, hope, I, I very yes. much hope not but the, the point is that this is this cycle of violence is going on and on uh, the fact is that the Palestinians have lived under occupation and Gaza They're not uh, under has occupation been, they, they have they, their own they state are, they have, the Gaza that's nonsense. Is, is a state that's nonsense. and it is and run by Hamas and they had one election the point which is, as Trevor people, said, the people th voted for Hamas. Right. Hamas then killed the other, the opposition, and they've it. never had an election right. since. But they could have a state. So if have, they wanted a state, they could have let, a state. Let Rishnara finish her point. You're saying that they are living the under is, occupation. There seems to be a bit, of an, a bit of amnesia here about the history of what's happening in that region and the fact that Palestinians don't have a state. They have, uh, you know, lived under occupation. They've lived under attack. And what we need is rapidly, uh, in order to secure peace, uh, which is rapidly eluding uh, uh, this well, region. We, ha we need the international community. We need leaders uh, in America and to European Union to work together precisely? to resume negotiations and to, first of all, bring an end to this conflict. Well, and that's the, end the, conf the end of the conflict will be fastest lives, brought about day. by Hamas being thrown out of the West Bank by the Palestinians of the West Bank or by any other force uh, available. We've got to remember this. The two-state solution, such as it is, and it's a dream, but it's still a possible dream if you talk, we'll talk about the West Do Bank. Do the Israelis what genuinely is believe in that yes, I think they do with the West Bank. The p thing that is a problem and is an irreconcilable problem at the moment is what you do with Hamas, which wants to annihilate the Jewish state and does not want peace. That is a Nobody problem. Right. The, problem, the, problem the real problem Nobody here is the agenda is now being controlled by people who don't want peace, whether it is the On settlers the and so West, yeah. uh, West Bank or That's right. it's Hamas. That's, right. That's, That's the problem. Absolutely. How do we wrest the agenda do out of the hands of those groups of people who, yeah. by the way, yeah. are not states? Yeah. These are gangs. Mm. Sure. Let's, and unfortunately, Gaza is run by a gang. Let's leave it. Well, that became feisty and fiery right from the beginning between Douglas Murray and Roshanari Ali, Labour Minister, uh, I mean, Labour MP, and Trevor, who's there from the government as well. And so we found this in the dustbins of the archives of the BBC. And that's what's on tap for you today. And we're going to get to Douglas Murray and his answer and the, and the feisty combatants in just a few seconds, but before we do so, you're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser, where I give you my political prescription from my political perspective of what happens when all these things collide. Culture, government, policies, social media, entertainment, Douglas Murray, labor MPs, all of that, the BBC. Let's get to more of that right now. Has Israel disregarded um, humanitarian and international law by going into Gaza in the way they have? No, not at all. Um, apart from anything else, the uh, very muted response, and indeed in many cases a very encouraging response for Israel from the international community, is I think testament to the fact that it is playing not just by the rules, but by the most stringent rules imaginable. The reason why uh, the casualties exist in the Gaza is obviously because Israel is trying as an operational objective to stop Hamas and other jihadist groups from firing rockets mm. into Israel. In order to do that, Israel is carrying out a very, very targeted campaign. Now, it is inevitable in that that, that civilians are going to be killed as well. And one of the reasons why that is happening, so excuse me, if I just finish, one of the reasons why that's, it's targeted, because they are trying to get the launch pads for the, from the, that the rockets well, are coming from. Now, one of the reasons why there is a problem from this, of course, killed. is that Hamas has, and incidentally CNN has the tape of this, among others, uh, has been encouraging the people of Gaza to, quote, protect the houses of Hamas commanders, to actually congregate around areas which the Israelis have dropped leaflets and texted civilians to say this area is going to be hit. Hamas has actually tried to maximize the casualties, so that's the first point. As for how this is to be stopped, I think there's a very important thing that we do not, in, in the international community does not simply perpetuate this conflict mm -hmm. in trying to stop Israel from achieving the operational objective of stopping the rocket fire. The it, international, right. this, is how, this is the third All time right. now that this has happened. Well, and I would suggest... It's more than the that, third time, no, actually. The third there time there's been, been this exchange since 2007. Right. Okay. I mean, we'll look at the operational... And, and, and what As I said before, very interesting debate. You literally could take that debate 
put it in today's news cycle and nobody would know that you were talking about something that happened a decade and a half ago because this continues to go on and on and on. And as Noah rightfully said, this was allegedly now, but let's just say the election was on the up and up and the Palestinian people decided that instead of going with the PLO or Fatah groups or other groups, they decided to go with Hamas and they democratically elected Hamas knowing full well who Hamas was and that they were, you know, borderline, you know, uh, maniacs, basically. They were terrorists, no doubt about it. They were a hardline group. They know what they have done in the past before. And so, not that they deserve it by any means, but elections do have consequences. Elections have consequences, no matter where they're at. And unfortunately for the people of Gaza and the Palestinians, those consequences have led to the death and destruction of many Palestinians when it really shouldn't have been. And as Noah said, the thing is always framed around the fact that Israel and then casualties. There's casualties on both sides. Yes, there's going to be more collateral damage, obvious in Gaza, just because of the predominance of the population around there. But the fact that you have to ask yourself this following question, which is, what is Israel to do? And what would you, as a state, as a nation, what would your proportional response be to somebody raining down rockets on your country, on your city? That's a question I just have to ask for anybody out there. But everybody goes back to, oh, we have to go back to 1947. Oh, we have to go back to the United Nations when we created. Oh, we got to go back 60, 70 years. No one's going back there anymore. What happened has happened. You have to deal with moving forward until Hamas decides to lay down their weapons and to basically, you know, take the white, um, take the white out go to their constitution, their charter, and take out the fact that they want the destruction of Israel and the eradication of the Jewish people. They take that out of their constitution. Folks, Israel has a right to defend itself, as would any other country. We appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already and you like our content, please share with us. If you don't like our content, let us know it as well. I love to read those negative comments to see what people are saying out there. And uh, we'll leave you with my final thought before that. Check out our video links here and there. My final thought is always, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.